Hey guys, it's Deeds. Thanks for joining us on the YouTube channel for Creative Retreat Kits. I'm doing another process video using the Faith Art Box for July. I'll just kind of preface this. If you hear tiny sounds in the background, that's just my baby. He's decided to join me for this part of the video. <laughs> I acquired some different colors of Nouveau Drops off scrapbook.com and so I've applied them to some of the stickers just to give them a little bit more interest. I like how it turned out too because as we're talking about Fruits of the Spirit, something about adding these Nouveau Drops made things feel juicy and fresh and so I like that. I also got this from Michael's and it's sequins and pineapple is my favorite fruit so it makes sense that I'm going to apply it here in my Bible page. Here's this month's July printables. I really enjoyed what Stephanie Adams did with these. There's a lot of color and there's a lot of versatility in the different shapes that you see. I mean of course we have the fruit but then she's added a whole other dimension with a sign that says organic produce. I mean that's just that just makes total sense like fruit produced by the spirit is organic and so very excited to be using these printables. My backdrop is brought to you by Color Theory Acrylic Paints. <laughs> I like these. They are very nice. They lay nicely. They can layer up easily. And what I really like is that they're not too dense. I can put a few layers down and still be able to see the verses behind. I like how these things lay down on the page. They're very soft. I can write on top of them and they don't bleed through. And that's something that I have considered a little bit more heavily as my Bible becomes more packed full of of journal entries, I have to be very careful what I put down because more often than not now, I'm finding myself having to cover up shadowing from another side, from another entry. So these lay down really, really nicely on the page. So while I'm finishing up the background there, I just want to read this passage of scripture here in Nehemiah chapter 8, and it starts in verse 9 and goes through about verse 12. It says, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept as they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready, for this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites calmed all the people, saying, Saying, be quiet for this day is holy do not be grieved and all the people went their way to eat and drink and to send portions and to make great rejoicing because they had understood the words that were declared to them as we're studying fruits of the Spirit I find it interesting that God has landed me here in Nehemiah the reason why I feel like I needed to visit this passage is because as a mom of five and on the day-to-day I don't necessarily seek joy, at least I don't feel joy. I don't understand how the joy of the Lord can be my strength. And that's partly to do with just the fact that I get caught up in this whirlwind, this twirliness of the day and what the day brings, that I rarely just sit back and realize the joy of the Lord is my strength. I reiterate this quite a few times and I have not necessarily even understood what I'm saying to myself until I read a little bit more into this passage and some commentary from a sermon that Charles Spurgeon preached a long time ago. What truly does the joy of the Lord is your strength mean? Spurgeon said, we have this mourning about us, this weeping and this grieving, much like the Israelites here in Nehemiah did. And what is interesting is that once we are done mourning and weeping and grieving over our sin, over some things that we have done to displease the Lord, then we can turn from that, we can repent, and God says, when you've repented, stop grieving, stop mourning, be happy and rejoice because I love you and because of my love, you can have joy. It's so fun to see things like this put in the Old Testament and then reiterated again in the New Testament. Incidentally, I am very sorry <laughs> that you guys can't see what I'm doing. And for a good portion of this process, the book is going to be halfway off screen. And so I apologize for that. I will note that for next time and reposition my Bible accordingly so that you guys can see the entirety of the page instead of just that top portion. It's like Ezra and Nehemiah are calling the people to understand a gospel of grace. He's saying to them, stop mourning, go eat, go your way, send portions to anyone who has nothing because this day is holy. And the background to this has somewhat to do with the fact that Israelite history uh, is a mess and of course we understand that Israelites goofed up over and over and over again and they had to seek God they had to turn from their sin they had to find repentance from their sin and seek forgiveness from the Lord 
we have to do that also. And when we become grieved over our sin, God is honored by that. And then God is further honored by that because we can then rejoice that we have God, that he has extended this love toward us. We have received his love and his forgiveness. And that is what brings us joy. That's the gospel of grace. Charles Spurgeon had so much to write on this topic and I love it, but I had to be as concise as possible in my journaling Bible. There are other notes in a journal that I wrote down to make sure that I don't forget that. I want to come back to that regularly. But for now, I'm just putting the fruit of God's love is joy. And this is where I took it from in his sermon. He is my God. I have taken him to be mine. He has taken me to be his. He has grasped me with the hand of his powerful love, having loved me with an everlasting love, with the bands of loving kindness he has drawn me to himself. My beloved is mine and I am his. Why then his soul would fain dance like David before the ark of the Lord, rejoicing in the Lord with all its might. A further source of joy is found by the Christian who is living near to God in a deep sense of reconciliation to God, of acceptance with God, and yet beyond that, of adoption and close relationship to God. So why am I unable to find joy in the everyday every day? And the answer is pretty clear. I am not seeking God's love in the everyday. I am not looking at the gospel of grace in the everyday. I'm not able to sit down and contemplate over what Jesus Christ has done for me and what all of that means. I mean, what he did was not just for me, but for the sins of the whole world. And what he did was not just pay for my sins, but he granted this access to God that without his death, burial, and resurrection, we would never be able to have. And so I'm guilty of a couple of things. And one of them is the fact that I messed up my sentiment there in the margin. The fruit of God's love is peace. Yes, I agree. The fruit of God's love is peace, but that's not what I was trying to get at. The fruit of God's love is joy. I was trying to get at the fact that a source of joy is what God has done for us and what God has afforded us. The other thing that I'm guilty of, obviously, is that I'm not looking at God's love as a source of joy. I'm not leaning on God's love to fulfill me and to inspire me and to create amounts of rejoicing within my home or joy in the relationships that I share with other people or joy in the everyday. That's my guilt and that's to my shame and that's what makes life a twirly, chaotic mess that it is. If you don't sit down and reorient yourself around God's love and what God's love produces and what God's love has meant to the entirety of history, even from Nehemiah's time, then we do end up doing ourselves a disservice. If you have the Spirit of Christ and if He's dwelling in you, He would love nothing more than to enrich you to have joy. Something else that Charles Spurgeon says to further this idea is, How sweet is it to think over all the Lord has done, how he has revealed himself of old, and especially how he has displayed his glory in the covenant of grace and in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. How charming is the thought that he has revealed himself to me personally and made me to see in him my father, my friend, my helper, my God, Oh, if there be one word out of heaven that cannot be excelled, even by the brightness of heaven itself, it is this word, my God, my Father, and that sweet promise, I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. God's beckoning is the same today as it was back then, and God's love is as strong and as fierce today as it was back then. I want to end with this quote by C.H. Spurgeon, which says, Let us endeavor to analyze that special and peculiar pleasure, which here is called the joy of the Lord. God's love is amazing, and it has afforded us so much. Try preaching the gospel of grace over yourself every day and find your strength in the joy of the Lord. Here are the final close-up shots. I'm praying and I'm hoping beyond hope that you have found this inspirational and encouraging and maybe that you're thinking of the joy of the Lord just a little bit differently today. Much love, you guys. God bless.